request to amend the adopted master plan of the Lobogata Kelly Street planned unit development. Uh, this is a continuation of a public hearing that was started previously <laughs> in December. And uh, we continued the hearing for the city attorney and the planner to do some research. And at this time, we will open the public hearing. And Ms. Michelle, are you ready? Had you contacted owners that you were going to and yes, research? Ma yes, ma'am. We were able to locate the third well, actually, both of the other two owners, uh, one was local, and uh, Mr. Leonard was able to locate that owner very quickly, and he consented to the application that is before the council. The second owner, um, whose name is Nash York, owns a majority of the three parcels, the, the larger center piece. Uh, we were able to locate uh, that entity. Um, as we had suspected, they were not completely focused on this situation. Uh, they, we uh, wrote them an email explaining and sent them a copy of the, uh, of, of the proceedings to this point and asked them if they had a position, uh, this was just before Christmas, and whether they supported or opposed the application. Uh, this week we were advised uh, by local council that he had been retained by Nash York, uh, and he is here tonight, and I would invite the chair and the council to hear him explain Nash York's position. Mr. Hughes, I believe you're representing. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, my name is Bob Hughes. I'm a lawyer with Barron and Redding in uh, 220 McKenzie Avenue, Panama City. And I've uh, our firm has been retained by Nash York to advise them uh, regarding the issue that's before the council. Um, the short answer is that uh, given they have, they've done, a, there are several partners and they've done, or members, and they've done um, a quick and extensive review of the information that is available. Uh, and based on the fact that there is not any real definitive uh, specific information as to what would be constructed or uh, developed on the adjacent piece of property. They've instructed me to tell you that they respectfully must not, con they will not consent to the application being uh, approved in any form whatsoever, whether that's with restrictions or not. So the, the answer is that they would not consent. Okay. Mr. It is, as I alluded to at the last hearing, Without the joined or at least the consent, now that we have the attention of the third owner, um, I believe it is my opinion that, that the council is without authority to consider the application. I don't think it can go any further because you've got uh, one of the owners in a PUD that not only uh, didn't join the application but refuses to consent to it in my sense. Mr. Hughes didn't use the word opposed, but my sense is by refusing to consent, that's about the same as opposing. Actually, I said we would not consent. I know. So he Mr. Sale, over the last 30 years, has had a habit of trying to read into things that I've said, and I try to read into things that he's said. We probably need to quit doing that. <laughs> well, I, I, I think y'all are agreeing. <laughs> well, my, 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 my opinion remains the same. They have not joined the application and they have declined to consent. They, they have not said they oppose. So it is the opinion of the city attorney that the city council cannot consider this issue? Yes, ma'am, because under your, re under your new land development code, uh, <laughs> there was some confusion at the last meeting, and I guess the best analogy I can give you, and as you know, I like to use metaphors and analogies, um, a Windows program, you can get the one thing a lot of different ways. <laughs> well, th there was or some consideration at one time given uh, in the old code and, and in the new one to having an express requirement for the joinder of all the landowners in an amendment to a PUD. That is no longer there. But there are other provisions which you, if you read them, you get to the same place because in considering the application, uh, all of the owners have to participate. And I think that plus the general 
law and custom surrounding PUD indicates that uh, this is a special zoning classification and it is designed to permit something unique and comprehensive to be done on a particular piece of property and it requires all of the owners to join it on the front end and it makes perfect sense to require the owners to join it to amend it unless you choose by some subsequent amendment to the ordinance to provide a vehicle under limited circumstances. I don't think you could do it willy-nilly, but, but you could amend a HUD uh, without the consent of all the owners under limited circumstances, but that's far beyond what I, I would be comfortable advising you about tonight. So in light of the, of the objection from one of the owners and the recommendation from the city attorney that the city cannot proceed in considering this, do we need a motion well, you can ignore my advice and go forward, or you can accept my advice. But and if we accept your advice, what do we need to do? You want a motion to say that? I, I, I don't think there's, if you accept my advice, uh, I think you can say that we can't go forward and you do not need to do anything further. Okay, so as, as a council, or does we, I'm in agreement. We want to accept the city attorney's recommendation and we cannot go forward. I do have a question about it, though. Do, do PUDs not expire? I mean, at some point? Ten years under your new okay. LBC. So that would be the next time that this would come back around. Uh, unless the owners got together and presented a plan, mm -hmm. or uh, unless you, the city, sought to terminate the PUD. You see that as, you see that as a possible solution for all parties concerned is if they get together and if they can come up with something they could mutually agree on that hopefully the residents would be happy with as well? <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> uh, but it, at, at least perfect if the, 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 it, the way things stand at the moment, and I'd be <laughs> delighted to have Mr. Leonard speak to this, but, but the, the way things stand at the moment, um, the property can be developed pursuant to the master plan and the development plan that's been approved by the city. Uh, at the expiration of that development opportunity, uh, it appears that the property would reserve, revert back to a, a, a very restrictive zoning, and the city or would have to decide whether to leave it there or change it. You could do that on your own, or you could do it on a petition of the owners, or you could do it on a petition of any one of the three owners separately. So all kinds of things that could happen. So if we're in agreement that we cannot proceed uh, based on the recommendation of the city attorney, then we need to terminate, we need to bring to end the public hearing. Yes. Uh, there's, there's, there's no action, in my opinion, there's no action you, that you can take in this hearing, and so you might as well be done. So uh, let's do that. Let's, if nobody objects, let's adjourn the public hearing and, uh, and the request for changing the zoning of that portion of land uh, will not take place. That's correct. It, the request is not denied. Basically, it's simply that the uh, you don't have the city does not have the authority to grant this. Okay. And while while we are assembled and you're on this subject, could we ask? Uh, since we have we've had some concern in switching from our regular zoning plan to our new land development code and some differences of opinion with the planner and the legal team. Mm -hmm. Could we ask the, the planners and the legal team to get together and look at the land development code right now and the PUD? Specifically uh, with respect to PUD. To PUD. Mm -hmm. and, and look at that and see, give us some options of things that we might do to amend a PUD. To amend PUDs. And other, th other than having all the owners come right. in and apply. Okay. Look, look at if that is the best thing or what is the best thing. And, and what are the options and kind of come back and tell us because uh, I think we've all been uh, confused with what we could and couldn't do and, well, I, and I, where I we were in the new land development code. I, I, I would be delighted to do that. I'm certain Mr. <laughs> Leonard would as well. I, 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 he, he on the policy level and, and me on what I think legally can be done. I, I think you have a number of options. Um, 
all legal, and then it becomes a question from a policy standpoint of what you wish to do, and, and I'll be delighted when that becomes Mr. Leonard's problem, and not mine. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I agree with you, Mayor, because this issue isn't going away. Yeah. 18 months from now, the same individual developer will be right back here, you know, changing, you know, changing up on this budget every way. So and, and we need to plan and, and be ready for that. And we have several PUDs. Mm -hmm. We do. We have several PUDs, and this issue could rise in any of them at any time. We just need to know what we can and cannot do, and and then what our policy will be. Is that okay with everybody? We'll ask the city staff to do that. Understood. Anything else? We are adjourned from the special meeting. Thank you all for coming.